ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the fourth episode of the DC3 build. In the last episode, we have attached the engines, created the engine housings, and made the tail of the airplane. If you have not seen the last episodes, I highly recommend you check them out now. I will start today's episode off by building the tail landing gear. After a bit of planning and cutting wood, I had all the pieces necessary to build it. A small hinge was attached with a few screws and the rest of the structure was held together using super glue. Once the assembly was finished, I prepared its mounting points and glued it into place. It may be a small landing gear, but it does need to withstand rough landings. I therefore glued a few additional supports. Finally, I created a little servo arm and attached it to the landing gear. This will allow us to steer the airplane on the ground using a servo. Speaking about servos, here are a few that I have salvaged from an old airplane. This little bit of yellow foam is something I did not expect to see. This particular servo must have been on the very first airplane I have ever built. Enough distractions, I have tested the servo and attached it to the back of the fuselage. Then I have attached it to the back wheel using a wire as a pushrod. Next, I have installed a second pushrod connecting the servo to the rudder. A second servo was installed to control the elevator. It too has been connected via a pushrod. The rudder and elevator, together with the ailerons on the wings, will give us full control over the airplane once airborne. Now I have fed the cables through the fuselage and started working on the skin. This piece over here has one of the most complex shapes of all the pieces. It is first bent inwards and then outwards. If you try to bend the foam the wrong way, it will simply snap. I have therefore reinforced it with tape to prevent it from doing so. Right now, I will try to finish the fuselage as fast as possible. While I'm doing that, I will give you the opportunity to vote on what livery we should paint this aircraft. The most popular suggestion as of now was Buffalo Airways. This is particularly relevant as these guys are currently restoring an old C-47 that flew during the D-Day. Their plan is to have it ready by the 75th anniversary of the D-Day, which will be on the 6th of June. Next on the list, we have Qantas. I couldn't find anything special about this livery, but I decided to include it anyways. And for those of you who suggested liveries of military aircraft, I do apologize for not including them, but I must say I do prefer making models of civilian aircraft. Anyways, let's continue with presenting the options. The next option I have chosen myself for several reasons. American Airlines. I really am a fan of the sleek vintage look of this design. What's more, American Airlines was the launch customer of the DC-3. In fact, the CEO of American Airlines persuaded Donald Douglas to design a larger version of the DC-2. This aircraft became known as the DC-3. And finally, a small surprise. This is the custom Fly RC Today livery. It's quite simplistic, but I do think it would look good painted on the model. Now you can go ahead and take your vote on the top right of the screen. As you may have noticed, I have started working on the electronics hatch. This will be the battery compartment. Not only will it hold the battery in place, it will also protect it from being damaged if I ever crash the airplane. For an airplane to fly straight, its center of gravity needs to be located around 25% down its wing. 
The tail of our model is quite heavy and would likely cause the airplane to pitch up and stall. We can prevent this from happening by placing the battery inside the nose. This will move the center of gravity closer to the leading edge. This should be the perfect position for the battery. I have glued the battery compartment in using hot glue. The friction between the battery and the walls should be enough to keep it in place. Finally, I glued in a few supports to stiffen up the fuselage around the electronics hatch. I have also added a removable floor to keep the cables tidy. The last thing left to do was to create a door for the electronics hatch. I have created a frame and cut it flush with the roof of the airplane. Then I have attached the skin and clipped the edges. Finally, the structure of the airplane was complete. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you have enjoyed this episode of the DC3 build. In the next episode, we will laminate the fuselage and give it a nice paint job, based on the livery you have chosen. Also, let me know in the comment section whether you like these little explanations that I do. I would like to know if this is obvious and I should try to explain something more complicated, or if it's on the right level and you would like to see more. If you don't want to see any explanations at all, that's okay as well, please let me know. As you can imagine, videos like this take an awful lot of time to create. I would therefore really appreciate any support on this video. In any case, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next episode.